Now that we understand that the marginal price is the cost of supplying the next megawatt of load, let's look at constraints. Here's the scenario. The generator at bus A has offered up to 150 megawatts. The load at bus D requires 100 megawatts. The buses A and D are connected by two parallel transmission lines. There is a generator at bus D, offering its power for a much higher price than the generator at bus A. The power will flow from the generator at bus A through the transmission lines and exit the grid at bus D, supplying the load. In accordance with Kirchhoff's law, the power will flow through both transmission lines in proportion to the relative impedance of the lines. In this scenario, the transmission lines have equal impedance, so each line will carry exactly half the power, 50 megawatts each. Although they have the same impedance, our two transmission lines do not have the same rating. This line has a rating of 70 megawatts, and this line has a rating of only 50. In this case, it has a lower rating because it has less clearance below it. There are many reasons for lines to have different ratings. The higher rating means this transmission line can carry more power through it than the line with the lower rating. So what would happen if the load at bus D increased to 120 megawatts? Generator 1 can easily produce 120 megawatts, but it is limited by the transmission lines connecting bus A to bus D. This line can comfortably carry up to 70 megawatts, but this transmission line has a rating of only 50 megawatts. Given that it is already carrying 50 megawatts, it is constrained. This is known as a binding constraint on the transmission system. You would think the extra 20 megawatts could be sent through the line with the higher rating. Unfortunately, we can't do that. Kirchhoff's law dictates that the power would be distributed equally between the lines. This means 60 megawatts through each line. Since this line is constrained, in order to supply the load at bus D, we'll have to use generator 2, who is not affected by the constraint. This illustrates how binding constraints can introduce additional restrictions on a transmission grid.